right, you bunch of yahoos. Strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Toxic Masculinity. We are here to entertain, offend, defend anyone and everyone, and maybe for the first time, make uh, some of you individuals think. Oh. Uh, we're here to make you scratch your head, scratch your ass, hopefully not with the same hand. Hey, my co-pilot, Don the Predator Fry, and yours truly, Dan, to be severed. All right, so there we go. Then we got that, and we got uh, Don. You've already been chatting with, with Brian really long. Why don't you simply introduce our guest, even though he probably don't, doesn't need an introduction. But anyway, throw it out there, Mr. Fry. Man, you ruined my intro, man. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Man does not need any introduction now that Dan okay. Severn has blown it. Okay. Excuse me. Brian Cage, how you doing, sir? Uh doing well, doing well, guys. Uh pleasure to be here. I know I'm trying to get this done for a little while. We're trying to hopefully do one uh, in person, but uh as we were just discussing with all the disturbances and traveling and whatnot, with the the busy lifestyles of all, all three of us. Yeah, we're but we'll, we'll throw too. throw that in, but then also throw in the wacky world the COVID protocol here still. Oh, you know, oh, true, there's all true. There, that, that's uh the, the past year has been uh a very um, and that's sort of what word that that, that actually describes the the insane, the insane, yeah, wow. insane. Yeah. stupidity, insane. I think yeah. a mixture of a little bit of everything there. Yeah, it's, stupidity. Uh, yeah. But we're right. we're happy that this this all came uh, together. And right now, you're are you actually on the road? Are you actually at home? There, no, right? I'm I'm at home right now. Okay, very so rare. you're, you're very rare uh, appearance of me being at home. <laughs> Well, you've got a little bit better setting there. You at least have a backdrop here right now. My backdrop here is I'll just be <laughs> showing you around backside. I've got uh, I've got boats zipping by me here at this point in time. Music oh. playing. Oh, so, it's rough, rough out there on your island, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a little rough here right now. I mean, I'm, Dan, yes. How's your old fiefdom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have to hire Brian and I to come over there and get rid of the peasants after. You know. <laughs> well, oh, quietly, because I, I there's a few of them that uh, I would like to so like shoot up a uh, torpedo to. You know, to they they <laughs> tend to. Uh, well, we've had so much uh, rain as of late that uh, the water level is extremely high, and uh, I have a property that would normally be almost an acre. Uh, that is roughly, I think I have half an acre right now because the rest of it is submerged. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, they need to build an aqueduct system from the from the Middle East. Middle East. <laughs> oh, man. From the Midwest over to uh, the West, you know. And uh, that way they can just let that water go down through uh, Colorado Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, you know, California. I mean, you all got lots of water that you're just letting seep yeah, well, away. Most of the, yeah, I'm going to say most of the time, either uh, California or uh, Arizona is on fire this time of year. Yeah, yeah. So There's a big yeah. drought and they're cutting off water to the farmers. It's yep. just, uh, there's no sense in it, you know. Build an aqueduct system, you know, from the, from the Midwest out to the West Coast and uh it's it's for this gross some food. Well, Don, I hate to say this, that actually that, that was called common sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then common sense, uh, where is that gonna get you nowadays? You gotta have Politics, something really yeah. kind of something really, really bizarre and abstract there. It's kinda of like going uh, you, you you it's like, well, Brian here, I, I should just be hit you on the spot right now. Like this morning when you when you woke up, did you identify with anybody else than simply just yourself? As Brian Cage, or did you? I mean, did you identify as a thirteen-year-old, uh, you know, uh, handicapped you swimmer or something like that, paraplegic? <laughs> or I mean, it's just. I mean, I mean, you, you, the insanity of uh, of, of uh, allowing kids to select their own gender, allowing kids to do this. I'm thinking, what insanity you, you know, are what, we that, at uh, in this world? That was actually. Um, I mean, I've always wanted to live in uh, in Vegas. I'm in Henderson. Um, I, I almost came out here a couple of times the last several years, but that was a big, um, big reason why we came out here because we were in California and it just, uh, it, that place is just getting worse and worse. 
with all that but stuff. But Nancy Pelosi's, come on, she's got your back. She's oh, got your back over there. I mean, yeah, so of no, course, we, you know, we had to she get was out just there. open borders and stuff like this, and yet doesn't she have a big old gate around her uh, entire property? <laughs> I mean, I think it, uh, why, why does she just no. have open borders uh, to uh, her own hacienda there? Huh? She's got those big giant refrigerator freezers full of ice cream. So, you know, let's, let's all go have an ice cream party. Oh, right. I, I didn't know about that then, Mr. Fry. You, you got me intrigued here now with that ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's, Dan's ready to charge the castle. Charge, that's right. Yeah. Well, again there, Brian, we're, we're here just, we're, we're having a lot of fun there with what we're doing. And we actually, uh, we look at, we like to interview people that are the, in our various industries that we have been involved in, uh, whether it be cage fighting, professional wrestling, amateur wrestling, but then just good Americans and stuff like that. And just uh, sure. people that... Uh, have that uh, that can do type of a spirit. So you're I mean, a big old 16. boy. How much you weigh? Uh, Two sixty five. Damn, damn. Dan, Dan topped off. You know, you topped off what two ninety five a couple of times. Well, that wasn't exactly good weight at that at that point. I had stretch. <laughs> I had stretchy pants on at that point. You know. <laughs> and your I think I, I hit the ice cream parlor just a few too many times. I did you not have. You were I did not have abs. In, yeah, I gotta say, I did not have abs in the terms of plural. Okay, I had a, a singular, nice, smooth ab at that time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you had a slope for all the. Uh, poor Dan. Poor Dan. You I kid. know. I'm just, just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm known as the whoopie boy here between uh, Mr. Fry and myself. He just, he just, he just went those crotchety old farts there that uh, whatever it is, but, uh, but it's you know. He's like an old dog. I, I kind of like having him on the porch all the time. <laughs> Speaking of old, old dog, where's where's old Quinny? Where's where's your dog there today, right Don? Here. I don't see her. She's right here laying down. You know. She's, yeah. Oh. I, I saw. I saw when you got on. Brian, you've been a big boy your whole life. No, I wasn't. I was. I graduated high school, uh, 110 pounds lighter. I was 155 when I graduated high school, Jeez. and uh, I was. Uh, I was like, you know what? This is going to cut the mustard. Uh, if I want, because I always wanted to be a pro wrestler, and I was like, all right, well, I gotta look. I want to look the part. I don't want to just show up at some pro wrestling school and get taken advantage of, and just you know, look like a joke. So I remember, like that summer, right after I graduated, um, my sophomore PE teacher who I was really cool with, who was also a big wrestling fan, told me at summer school if I wanted, I could, uh, I can get to the high school, and he'd open up the weight room for me so I could start training. And so, like every morning. Uh, I would wake up at seven and jog to my high school and then uh, I would just start training. And that was, that summer just what got me, uh, got me just in love with it, all of it, with training and bodybuilding and all that aspect. And it was all just to fuel my dedication to make it into pro wrestling. Um, and but did, you, did, did you participate in any other kind of sports though in high school? I mean, did you, you know, do I, soccer I, or wrestling or? I, I, I didn't at all. And I regret it so much. Well, I played, okay. So I played Pop Warner football a couple of years and okay. I, I hated it because I love playing football my friends all the time when we, we did it, my mom put us on the team across town because it was cheaper yeah when i say we it was me and my older brother did it and and we none of our friends were on there so like i hated going there i was like i don't want to go play it. like so i was like turned off by that and i didn't want to be a, a follower because i remember we went to high school like everyone was like oh you gotta play uh, uh football and then everyone knew how much i wanted to be a wrestler so they would say oh she's going to the wrestling team too and i remember then I would get so upset about it. It's like, no, it's not the same thing. Like, that's not the rest I want to do. And I would get like offended. And then I, I, I did some of it well, with my friend who was the, the coach for or a junior high in my hometown. And I would, uh, I would go in and train with him. And even in pro wrestling school, you do some of the basic stuff to learn some fundamentals. But and I was like, man, I realized how much more beneficial and helpful it would have been had I done amateur wrestling um, beforehand. But I was also um, a big skateboarder. Surprising people are usually pop for that, but I, yeah, so I skateboarded all through high school. Um, and then of course, that'll, that'll, get, that'll get you far, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they all get, oh, got my God. first knee surgery too. Um, and then I, I was also a big backyard wrestler because I was like the, all the craze back then. <laughs> back then, how old are you? 37. Jeez, so, yeah, so I had a first uh, uh, baby, I first started uh. My first match was when I was 21, so it's like about 16 years now. Yeah. Wow. And uh, who, who, what school did you go to? Uh, originally, I went to the school in Yuba City, California, 
uh, called PCW. And uh, it was ran by a guy named Mr. Primetime, but the main person who was like, I mean, just the shit at training, uh, not the shits, but the shit, like awesome. Uh, it's a guy by the name of Old School Oliver John. Um, but he, he was immaculate. He was like one of the, definitely a, a great guy that, you know, that never made it. He had, could just do it all. There's like no weak points. And I remember too, like even then, like my first indie loop, yeah, so I'd always been a big boy, right? Because I'm in shape. And that's like a die. I'm like a dying breed now. Everyone used to be jacked and in shape when wrestling. Like yeah. everyone's, you know, skinny, fat, or tiny now. And I remember my first loop with PCW um, doing like these three different indie shows throughout Southern California or SoCal and Bay Area of California. I was like, they're like, oh, so what did you think? And I was like, like not even trying to be insulting, but one of the first things out of my mouth was, wow, nobody likes to work out on the indies, huh? Because it's like everyone, no one looks like wrestlers. Like, what's the deal? Right. So right. I was, I was thrilled that old school over John only was he a tremendous trainer, but you know he was like in his mid forties and doing it for forever, and he was super jacked, and shredded, just in shape. I'm like, dude, if this guy who's not even really fully go do anymore, and, and he has full time job and this and that, whatever excuse you want to find. Like looks amazing and still busts his ass and like what's the, everyone else's excuse? So you said you always wanted to do pro wrestling. What was that made you want to do that? Uh, you know, I was a fan of it as a as a, a little single digit kid, and uh, around the age ten, it was just I was just so infatuated with it. I just I just wanted to be a wrestler. And it was it was probably more of like a you know childhood dream as far as like make believe, like like being a superhero or something. Which I never yeah, were, were the that, couple but, wrestlers that you followed that you uh, that you really enjoyed oh like sure sure like, so, so I mean Shawn Michaels was like my favorite at that time and he's still probably my all time favorite and he had the little boyhood dream as well so I I, I really wanted to uh, stick to that and I really wanted to make it happen I remember you know it was like fifth grade I'm talking about wanting to be a wrestler then junior high wanted to be a wrestler and everyone's like you're gonna grow out of that and then come high school and so on I'm like no no this is what I want to do um, and then in high school I was um, I was very, uh, very much wanted to emulate the three Chris's, as I call me. So as you said, that I watched many people, um, Chris Canyon, Chris Benoit, and Chris Jericho were like the three I wanted to kind of mix together and be a, be a hybrid of. Yeah, I love Benoit. Benoit, Benoit and Jericho, you know, they're tops. They were over there in Japan with me uh, quite a few times. And they're they're awesome, you know. Chris Jericho, he knows everything there is to know about pro wrestling. You know? <laughs> he's amazing, yeah, and, I, and he's still doing. It. He's with us now, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, those 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 were the top three, and I, I just felt like the combination of their, you know, intensity, pumping, selling, technical prowess, physique, charisma, mic work. I mean, all, all of it. Like, but if I took a few. Uh, great traits from each of them and, and try to make it my own, um, then that would, in my eyes, you know, create the perfect Brian Cage that I wanted to be. What did you uh, tell me what, what you learned from each one? Can't leave um, it hanging. You just leave us hanging there, man. <laughs> well, I never, I, I mean, I, I obviously have gotten to talk and uh, cross paths with Jericho plenty of times now, too. I even, I give, you asked where I first started training, I give a lot of my credit to Chris Canyon to help break me into the business and, and get me out of California and help get me to uh, WWE. I was there in deep South wrestling, uh, South of uh, Atlanta for, uh, it was probably for about eight or nine months before they closed their doors. Um, but I was there uncontracted, but I was able, I was, I was one of only two people that were there um, and that were allowed to train and be part of every single show with all the signed talent. And then after doing that, it's what led to me, getting contracted shortly afterwards and then going to Florida championship wrestling uh, under a WWE developmental deal. Um, but, uh, uh, I mean, definitely out of the three, uh, Canyon was, I mean, Knox was close to him. He's my friend, but he had um, a very uh, innovative moveset and very innovative offense that always popped me and stuck out to me as a kid watching it. And I remember everyone wants to have like the match of the night, but uh, Canyon, whether he did or didn't, he'd always have some sort of new move or, you know, sequence or something that I've never seen before. So it would always resonate with me and stick with me. So they're going forward. I always want to have matches tonight as well. And if I didn't, then at least almost every single show I've ever been on, someone's came up to me, whether it be a fan, a wrestler, an agent, whoever, and 
will will say something about a move or something I did that they've never seen um, before. So that's kind of like a little feather in my cap that I've been able to continue that aspect. Um, and yeah. I've got I've got slight comparisons to all three of them too, um, unknowingly um, from people. So that's also another little, I guess, a little credit. Where people are like, oh, you kind of remind me of Benoit. Oh, that reminds me of Kane. Or oh, that remind me of Jericho. So. How, how'd you meet each one of those guys? Um, Benoit I only met uh, in past a few different times when I was backstage, both before I signed and after I signed, just the extra. Um, Canyon I originally met actually as a, as a fan. Um, I was I was at a Monday Night Raw at Arco Arena in Sacramento, and I had a Who Better Than Canyon sign. I was a little sane. And it was during the Austin Appreciation Night when Kurt Angle came out and like sprays everyone out with melt. And uh, whatever, long story short, he saw my sign, he came back out and uh, he gave me like the Who Better Than Austin shirt that he had that night. And uh, he gave it to me, then he signed that and he signed my sign. And uh, it just, it just, it, and not only was I so ecstatic about it, but you know, at the time I think it was 17, but like it just fueled my desire to be wrestled that much more because I wanted to make another fan's night that much you know, or that memorable as that had just done to me. I remember I posted on it on, on his website and the webmaster had like forwarded it to Canyon and then he had randomly emailed me um, and I'd email him back and forth. And then uh, after, and then he started getting bill gets comp tickets wherever they're like within our state and whatnot. And then eventually when he got released um, and I was, I was running my own shows up in Chico, California. And then he came in and uh, he worked one of our shows with us which was phenomenal. And I started training with him. And then he got me over the, I, I went to his place, Florida for a little bit to do some stuff over there. And then he's the one that put the word in and got me uh, into deep South wrestling. So I, I, I obviously I knew him very well. We had a very good friendship with him and he helped me out tremendously. And then Jericho, I'd met in passing as well. I didn't know, no Jericho until probably right before, right before the, the very first Jericho cruise is when I like, you know, really met him, met him, if you will. Yeah. yeah, he's good. Guy. Oh yeah, yeah, he's great. He's great. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what those guys, you know, are in the ring. You know, you you stand backstage and you and you watch it like a fan. You know, when when Jericho or Benoit were out in the ring, you know, and um, and I, and I know everyone shits on Benoit now too, right? Because of what happened. I don't. Chris, Chris, well, my friend, you know, I mean, I don't know what happened in the last 72 hours of his life, yeah. but he was a great guy up till then. He was my friend and I love you know, him. And I, and I, uh, uh, it's not like I'm like gloating about any of it, but like, exactly. I don't rap it either. People can say what they want to say, blah, blah, make it. And I like to, I always want to attack everything and blame it all on steroids too, just because wrestling gets like that bad rap with it. But I'm like, Really, because that's not happening in like in any other community that has, you know, a performance enhancements going on where people like that wasn't like a roid rage 72 hour. Like that was, I don't know what was happening. But regardless, I mean, his personal life had nothing to do with me and nothing to do with why I was a fan of him. So neither say like that was still, a, you know, horrific incident that happened. Like I'm still a fan of him and his work and everything else yeah. up until that point. So I'm a fan of, you know, Chris Benoit, the character, because I didn't know him. Like, you knew him. He, you, know, you knew Chris Benoit is your friend. But I know I thought he was great, and I hate that um, that his legacy has pretty much been erased from wrestling when he was, did so much. He was so great. Right. I thought that, was, that was chicken shit, you know? Yeah. When that, when that I mean, was, yeah, you go on the network and stuff, and, and you can't find his you know, name. You can't find freaking any of his matches. Or, it's just it's a shame. I mean, I get it. They're trying to be, you know, PC about it, but it just sucks. Yeah, I agree with what you said there, Brian. I, I really enjoyed his work rate. He was a guy that was never going to cut a, a great promo or anything like that, but he was going to step out there and, and just with his work ethic alone, he was going to make you make you love him. So that's what I liked about watching his matches. Well, and, and you guys coming from, from the shoot world too, I thought Ben Watson was always one guy that always brought a lot of believability in pro wrestling. Yeah. Like I felt like a lot of people who just, who, you know, obviously people who aren't fans at all wrestling, Always like, oh, whatever, it's so fake, it's so fake. But I feel like Benoit was one of the few guys, like, when he's in the ring, you're like, oh, shit, wait, is this one real? Like, he, he just he had that really, really good believability about him, which was so uncanny. Right. Yeah. And like you said, you know, uh, 
he was really dedicated in, in keeping in shape, uh, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah, that thing too. Like people, like he was pretty much the same shape like his entire career. Yeah. Might be like a little, like like I mean, a lot of people you know kind of go up and down or game, but like yeah, he was jacked and straight in condition, like like from like start to finish. Yeah. Yeah, he would he, he would go uh walk the walk the towers the stairways in those big uh towers up there in Tokyo you know the the big hotels yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott Norton went with him one day and uh, he couldn't move the next day he said it, <laughs> his calves are all knotted up <laughs> he laying in bed screaming <laughs> that's good that's Norton's good. a big big yeah, yeah Norton yeah, yeah he's a mountain yeah. of a man big boy to be walking the stairs <laughs> well Severn are you going to be involved in this thing well but I am there but Mr. Fry you've, you've, you've been kind of controlling all I'm thinking well I, yeah. I like this here so far I'm just kind of sit back and just enjoy uh, just what we that uh, Brian's talking about you know, it's, uh, well, well Brian I mean uh, well, you work you work predominantly with AEW right now is that where yeah. you, you work yeah. okay and uh, I mean what's uh, what's I guess if there's certain things that you could talk about, what's really on on your short term horizon? What uh, what's what's happening currently? What uh, what uh, are you striving product? for? Okay, me, so I was. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm gonna come to your house.